inform the informer and tell each other if there are any changes in the lectures. Um, so just take a look at this. This is in front of, have you all got uh, access to the front of rooms? Yeah? So this is all there. Uh, the same is with the, the reading list. Uh, I know that some of you already got a couple of books. You bought at least this one. This is Norwegian, so you don't have to read it, or you, you guys don't have to buy it. This is in Norwegian. This is uh, more or less um, much the same literature as it is in English. Uh, and also you can use it as support literature. And on the schedule or on the, um, on the lecture plan, it says what you're going to read to the different, um, to the different um, say lectures as well. There are no other books that you have to buy. Uh, as you can see, the, the one that is hyperlinked, you can access those articles from Himole. Those are, um, we are, karate, um, <laughs> Yeah, the, the library has access to those articles. So you have to access them from here, not from your homes. And also, there will be uh, this article collection that will be put in front there. We've, um, I've already ordered it, but it takes some time before it comes. So until that comes, uh, if there is uh, literature that should be for, for instance, next lecture, I will um, put it in front there anyway, although it's supposed to be in that article um, collection. Is that okay? <coughs> and of course, if you have any questions, also to the literature, you ask me. Coursework. In the middle of this course, around or in the end of March, there's a, an assignment that needs to be handed in. And um, I will give you information, as it says, the 10th of February, approximately, what this assignment is. It's basically using uh, literature, articles, theory, to discuss a problem or a topic related to the organization and management of sports. Okay. Um, also, you will get the, uh, the details, but this is the size of it, 1,500 words plus minus 10%. And you use the standard ways of referencing and all that. It's very important to us, you know? So we have to be very thorough when it comes to those things. And then it's examination. You will have information about the exams later. But just uh, as a starting point from what you already know from this uh, study handbook, uh, throughout the semester, we'll start mid-February, maybe at the end of February, we'll start with the group work. And it's more of a, it's a group, it's group work, but it's more, um, um, do you know this concept, Grinda uh, Camp? more that kind of project work. You want to do a uh, type of project and then uh, make plans for it, etc., etc., and um, present it at the end with, um, with documents and a presentation to me and also to other sensors. Everybody has to be there the whole day as audiences at the exam. So I don't really remember which date it was. Was it the 13th or something of May? 11th, 11th of May. Just uh, that day you're fully booked, all of you, anyway. OK? No excuses. And it will be in English? If you have English-speaking people in your groups, which you are likely to have, it will be in English. OK? Groups and everything else will be presented to you yeah, when, when did I say? Yeah, end of February. If you remember from that schedule, we were going to this excursion. And around that point, we're, um, we are um, presenting this topic or the examination. And last point regarding information is Himolda X. 
uh, which is, uh, you all know what that is, I guess, is that the lectures will be filmed and uh, published in, uh, in this, uh, <laughs> uh, is it on, on a website, but it's not on YouTube. Anyway, it's, uh, it's <laughs> connected to this course anyway. So most of the lectures will be, pub uh, will be taped, not all of them, depending a little bit on what the, t uh, what the topic is. Uh, and also if we have a guest lecturer, like in a couple of times, we're, uh, less, um, lectures where we're having this uh, lady, and I don't know if she wants to have her, her um, lecture taped. So we won't do that if we can't force people to be online like this, OK? But uh, most of it will be. Any questions so far? No? Good. So let's head on to what we're going to do today. Uh, today we have like an introductory course to this whole sports um, organization management topic. And what is this uh, uh, course about? Well, um, this is Sports Organization Management 1. And then there's another course, which is number 2. So this uh, cor uh, our course, number 1, looks at the, um, we take in the starting point from a Nordic perspective. We look at the Nordic ways of organizing sport. But we also look at sports in society. Why is sports important in a society? And it's really interesting that we have other people from other parts of, the, of Europe, not the world, but Europe here too, because it's different. And I hope that we'll get some of your perspectives on how to organize sports in your societies. Um, but today, we're going to <coughs> have a sort of an introduction, soft start, and say something about this relationship bef between sport and society. What is it? Why is sport important in our society? And then, um, since this is a, um, and you also see that from literature, this is a course which is also touching upon what we call sports or, or sociology, sports sociology. We're going to use sociological theories to help us understand this relationship between sport and society. What is sports and what is sport in society? So today we're going to discuss some theoretical approaches, far from all. We're just going to give some examples from from some very common approaches. This may be a bit provocative for some, but we're going to discuss what they mean with this. What is it that makes a country successful in sports? And then at the end, um, last hour, we're going to see a film which is uh, talking about sport and politics. What is this? And why do we say that sport is not just a game? It's American. So, uh, so any of you seen it? It's an American production, so we need to try to adjust <laughs> a little bit when we, when we watch it. But it's still very relevant, I think. And that's why we're going to watch it. Sociology. Has any of you studied that before? No? So what is sociology? What do you do when you study sociology? You can read it here, but <laughs> more or less. Sociology is, uh, as it says, part of the social sciences. Uh, it's one of those uh, topics that you may study. And sociology, you have psychology studying individuals and groups. Sociology studies individuals as well. But they study individuals in relation to society. That's important in sociology. And then we talk about micro and macro sociology. What do you think that means? What is macro sociology? What is macro? The tiny little things? No. Macro is the big structures. And then the micro is the small structures. So we can say that studying the individual might be on a micro level. But we can study the individual in a macro perspective as well. So they kind of juggle between macro, micro and macro, <laughs> not macro, micro and macro sociology. 
And then when we present findings from sociology, people tend to say, well, well, this is, uh, this is obvious. I knew this already. This is not science. This is just common sense. I knew this. Well, what is, um, what is, uh, that might be true <laughs> for ma in many cases, but sociologists tend to um, test those common sense knowledge. Um, so, and thus the results coming from sociological research is often to people very, very uh, familiar. We already know this because it's stating something that most people think they know. But of course, they put science next to it. They ask why things are the way they are in society. They compare. Why is it like this here and like this there? Why do we have this structure in Norway and this structure in France? What's the difference? In Norway nowadays, we like to talk about talent identification, for instance. Uh, why do we protect our children so much that we can't make them really uh, tal or you know, their talents, but uh, we won't let them compete on international level before they're 13 or 14. Other places in Europe, they say, hey, that's not a problem. You know? And then we have to see the end, the end point. And that's what sociology, for instance, is interested in. What's the difference here? Do we see any differences? And the research methods they used are often qualitative. Have you had methods yet? Do you know anything about methods? Just introduction. Introduction? So what is a qualitative method? What is a quantitative method? Remember? To say it in an easy way, when you, have a, when you conduct a quantitative study, you collect many people. many people. It's numbers. You can count things. Quantity. Whereas qualitative, qualitative, <laughs> qualitative studies are not that uh, they're not, deeper. yeah, deeper might be, or a quantitative uh, scientist would disagree with you because nobody thinks that their research is not deep, but uh, a qualitative uh, researcher would do maybe less people, but maybe have an interview. Okay, I don't just don't want people to tick out things on a, on a questionnaire. I want to ask them why they take out what they take out. You will learn a lot more about this, uh, of course, later. And those of you who will write bachelor theses, how, how long are you in your, how long have you been studying? Seven years. Seven years. Two. two, two years. So this is your second year, yeah. In a, yours, yours too? This is your third year. Have you already written a bachelor thesis? No, I'm not studying bachelor. No. I'm studying diploma. Okay, so it's a bit of a, no, a different system. Yeah. And you guys? Yeah. Your third year. Yeah. yeah. The rest of you is your first year. Just so you know. <laughs> but just so you guys know, this is the first year. So, what's the role of sport in society? Sociologists like to uh, talk about social, social institutions, that society is built up by social institutions. And there are some institutions that all societies um, have, more or less. All societies have a state, a politics. Whether or not we think they're good <laughs> states of politics, all societies have that. Most societies have markets. And they consist of families, relations. Uh, religion is a social institution, according to sociologists. And also the civil society, civil something, the outside of the, of the official formal structures. So sociologists like to, to um, divide society into those social institutions which need to work in order for society to work. Somehow, they need to work. And if we look at 
sport, for instance, sport may relate to all of these. For instance, these four, all of these social institutions does sport relate to. How does sport relate to the state? I know you know because we just uh, talked about it last semester. Yeah? In, Nor in Norway, sport relates to the state very, very closely. The Norwegian Confederation of Sports get, gets funded from the government. I don't know how, the, how it works in France, for instance. Are there close ties to the, sta to the state and sports organizations? Sport. Yeah? Which sports it is? How about Germany? privatized it's privatized yeah. hmm. how about the market how does sport relate to the market anyone does sport relate to the market no how uh, sponsors, sponsors. Very important. There's a huge market that sports relate to. Not only a sports market, but, but uh, a market outside sport, but sports still need to re relate to it. Media, for instance, which can also be an, an own institution, actually. The family. Sports in the family. Anyone? The individual usually it's part of a family. And that connection is quite, quite strong then, because most families have individuals that are also connected with sports. And then we have the civil society, which is an important part of where sports relate. Civil society organization, SNF is a civil society organization, although it's sponsored by the state. So sport plays a, a role into also the civil society. So that's why we think, and sociologists, sports sociologists think that sport is an important part in a society because it, plays, it may play a role in all those social institutions. And we may discuss which role it plays, but it does probably, to most of your knowledge as well, play, play an important, or less important, but play a role. So I want you to discuss together. So those of you don't, that don't really have, say three and three, or four and four. <coughs> so you have to, you're forced to make groups for those of you who are not in groups already. Why is sport important in society? If it's important, why is it important?
okay. Why is sport important in our society today? Anyone? You group. Uh, heroes. Heroes. What did you say first? Gather. Gather. Different people. Other things. Why is sport important? You had your hand up. Did they already say it? Anyone else? <coughs> yep. What, feeling of mastering. Sports. Other things? Help. <laughs> Supposed to say economy. Other things? Heroes, identity, international prestige, gathers different people, feeling of mastering sport, health argument, economy, activates people, socialization, it's a trend. Entertainment. <laughs> We're all set. It's good. It's very, um, it's very relevant, I think. And it's probably a multiple of other reasons, too. But uh, definitely, many important reasons. And you will see that in the next slide, that it correlates to research on this. This is why sport is important for government support. Why do, s why do governments support sport? And this is uh, an article, that, or not an article, a book chapter that is in your, um, I think I am. Um, I published it in front there for you? Oh, yeah, I did. It was to for today. From this book, Bag Score and, uh, and a group of other researcher have, uh, researchers have looked at sport politics in Norway, Denmark, no, Norway, <laughs> Canada, Germany, and Great Britain. And from uh, these uh, sport politics, these countries, and they, they, and they compare, obviously, what's different and what's similar. But they found these things as the main reasons for governments to support sports. First of all, it's strong cultural significance, which is quite in the line of what you already said. We need national heroes uh, to create national identity, international prestige. Those are the things that relate to 
amongst other things, to the cultural significance, how important sport is for a government. And we know, I remember I told you last, or I gave an example last course we had in sport history, how even presidents, or not presidents, well, prime ministers in Norway during uh, um, football uh, World Cup, for instance, for a, a long, <laughs> long time ago, Norway were quite decent uh, in an international perspective. And, and how prime ministers were like embracing this and uh, came to the, uh, to the TV studios to talk about this. They never probably touched the football in their whole lives, but still, this is so important for national identity. You probably know that from, uh, from Germany, how football creates identity. Yeah. Everyone's wearing the national colors and everyone's proud of being German, but when it's, when it's over, no one's wearing colors and no one's really proud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's quite interesting actually. And I heard that also this um, in Norway and the Nordic countries, but at least in Norway, we have had this tradition since a, a long time ago to, to use the flag in every position possible. But that has been a bit more restrict in, in Germany, I understand. Until recently, right? Yeah. Then it's been um, a national, uh, the flag also as a national symbol is quite important. I've, I've heard anyway. But this strong cultural um, significance is absolutely important and interesting for government. Because they see how, for instance, sport can create a common national identity. We like to think that we're in best in ski, or we don't have to argue with that cross-country skiing, <laughs> for instance, you know, but that's a part of our national identity. We like to say that we're best in cross-country skis, and we, well, yeah, that's a part of the identity, and that's why it's interesting as well, because it may create something that people in the same social context have in common. The second point is also equally important uh, supporting sports uh, because sports may be seen as a resource <coughs> to help deliver, as it says, non-sport government objectives. And then we have all those other things. Not all of them, some of them. <laughs> For instance, gathers different people, activates people, health. Those things that are not specifically part of the sport activity at itself. It's not an elite sport. It's uh, in itself, for instance. But it's equally important because uh, sport can contribute in activating people, yes. Giving them a better health, yes. Integration, yes. It may contribute, etc., etc. And we see that governments uh, use that as very, uh, very important reasons to support those types of initiatives. In my own work, where I've, um, in my studies, I've been looking at uh, a different, it's very related to this. It's not a Norwegian context, but I'm looking at sport as a means uh, in development work, in development aid. I don't know how much you know about this, but for instance, Norway supports government, no organizations that are doing development aid work in the South somewhere with sports. For instance, right to play. You know that organization, you know? And uh, it's not necessarily because it's so important to give children a football or to teach people in Africa how to play football or netball or volleyball. It's all those other things that they're using as arguments. And those are also going in trends. So in the 90s, it was very trendy to talk about HIV and AIDS because that was a big problem and still is. So if you wanted money to do projects like that, you needed to write that as part of it, needed, sort of, to say it very bluntly. You had to write, okay, we use this as a means to combat HIV AIDS. Today it might be youth that is more important, or not more important, but also important. So they use if you want to get a project like that through, you can't just say we want to teach them how to play football because football is so important. No, you have to teach them, use football to teach them other life skills. 
so that they can learn how to be entrepreneurs and set up a business. Uh, use football to get to the children and teach them something else. And that's very related to this second uh, argument. There are other things that are more important to governments than actually sport, but sport can be a way in to contribute to that. And of course, in um, Western society like Norway, France, Germany, this health perspective is very, very important. Sport for health. If activating people can contribute to a better health of people, well, that's good, because then we can, um, then we can um, reduce the amount of time people are ill in hospitals, so they can contribute to the, to the economy of the country. And that relates to the third uh, point here. Uh, which is the multidimensional character of sport. Sport is not only part of the welfare policy when it comes to health. Sport in itself is an industry and it creates jobs. It, um, it, uh, there's a lot of money involved in sports. Uh, so financially supporting sport pays back. So that's the third reason, amongst probably others as well, but these are the three main reasons they argue that governments keep on supporting sports. Um, also, the, the things that are outside sport and the finances in it. We're going to have one more slide now before we take a break. Okay, there's a bit of. I'm just going to introduce you to what we're going to do next, <coughs> next hour or next lesson. Uh, we've been talking a little bit now about sport in society. Why is sport important in society? What is sociology? What is sports sociology? What do we say that sport is? Sociologists will say that sport uh, is a um, is a a result or a product of society. Sport, uh, sport is developing in the way it does because of society. As I told some of you, most of you, many times, sport is not this little bubble that flows, flows in the air on its own. Sport is influenced by everything else that is happening, all those social institutions that we were talking about. So the next um, 45 minutes approximately, we're going to look at four uh, theories, theoretical directions, or what we can call paradigms, um, on how we may analyze sport in society. These are four ways of looking at sports in society. There are multiple other ways to look at sports in society. We we're just going to give an introduction to a way of thinking. Okay? When you write your essays, I don't expect you to be fully theoreticized, but I want you to try to attempt to think a little bit um, in, another in another way, or a theoretical way. Okay, this is how it is. According to that theory, or uh, in this perspective, we can analyze society or sports in society like this and that and this and that. Okay? We'll give an introduction to that in the next lesson. But now we'll have a break. I don't even have... 15? Minutes? <laughs> 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 <laughs>